car? I'm about to. We're gonna give it a try. Okay, so I'm in Scotts Valley, California, um, a little bit north of uh, Santa Cruz. And we are at one of the first Tesla superchargers with the new Magic Dock. It's a new trick that Tesla has figured out to allow for CCS charging on any vehicle. You don't need to be a Tesla owner um, to use it, and it looks pretty cool. So this is what it looks like. Okay, the first thing you're gonna to need to enable this is a Tesla account. Now, I already have a account with Tesla, so I don't need to download anything or uh, create a new account um, because we have a Model X currently. Um, once you have the account set up, you can just go into the profile and scroll over to the right where you'll find the charge your non-Tesla button. Click on that button and it'll show you the map of all the superchargers in the area. Um, you can search the whole world if you want uh, so that you can kind of plan out your routes ahead of time to find out and make sure that you have the right Tesla superchargers that have the CCS adapter available. Once you select it, you'll be brought to the data page uh, for the supercharger. This gives you all the information uh, as in what you can find there, like is there free Wi-Fi, is there a place to go to the restroom, is there food, uh, etc. And then the charging fees. Now you can see right here that the charging fees are actually significantly higher than a regular Tesla um, charging at a supercharger. So I'm my by my estimations, it's about 20% increase. Um, that's significant when you're talking about uh, trying to charge at a supercharger, which is already the most expensive way to charge a Tesla. And now it's a little bit more expensive to um, charge a regular EV. Now I was hoping Tesla would try to come in here and undercut the competition a little bit, but that does not seem to be the case at this moment. Once you press the charge here button, you'll be taken to the charging station where you can see all of the stalls that are available. Now scroll over to the stall that you're looking for, um, select it, and you'll be able to unlock the CCS adapter for that station in particular. And here's what it looks like when you unplug it. Yeah, I know. Come on. All right, plugged in. It's thinking. There we go. We are charging on a Tesla supercharger for the first time on a Rivian R1C here in Scotts Valley, California. All right, looks like we're going at 260 miles per hour. Let's check out what it is in kilowatts. So we're getting 113 kilowatts right now, but it just plugged in. So let's see what happens after it ramps up a little bit. It's kind of staying steady at 116. That's still pretty good for this experience has been really good because Tesla superchargers are way, way better uh, when it comes to reliability. Like this has been the smoothest experience that I've had so far with a um, charging station. Uh, when it comes to generic stations like um, the uh, Electrify America or EVgo or something like that, it doesn't tend to work quite as well as a Tesla supercharger. Being a Tesla owner myself, I understand how easy it can be. And moving to a, a Rivian R1T, it made it a little bit more difficult because you lose a lot of that reliability in the supercharging network. So now that we have that accessibility, it's a lot better. And you can hear my sigh of relief in that. When you're done, all you gotta do is unplug it. Push it back in there. Ready for the next Tesla to supercharge.